Identity-based encryption is a notion of public key encryption where any string, such as a name or address, can serve as a public key of a user. We usually formalize this via the following four algorithms. There's a setup algorithm that generates a master public key and a master secret key. We think of this algorithm being run by a trusted key authority. There's a there's a key generation algorithm, which is also run by the key authority, which given any identity, generates a corresponding user secret key. And then there's the encryption algorithm, uh, which given an identity and the master public key, as well as a message, computes a ciphertext under this identity. And finally, there's the decryption algorithm, which given a user secret key and a ciphertext computes or, or outputs the corresponding plain text message M. And in terms of correctness, we require that this message M that decryption outputs uh, when we decrypt with the user secret key SKID is the same as the message that was encrypted under the identity ID. Security is defined via the following experiment uh, between a challenger and a PPT adversary. First, the challenger generates a pair of master public and master secret keys, and the master public key is given to the adversary. Now the adversary is allowed to query identity keys for an arbitrary number of identities of his choice, and at some point, the adversary outputs an ident or passes an identity, its star and two messages, M0 and M1, to the challenger. And we require that this challenge identity, its star, is different from all the identities for which the adversary has queried keys. The experiment chooses a random bit B and encrypts the message MB under the identity, its star. And the resulting ciphertext is given to the adversary. Now the adversary gets more access to the, this key oracle. It means he can, again, ask keys for identities, its, uh, conditioned on uh, that they're different from the challenge identity its star, and uh, receives the corresponding uh, identity secret keys. In the end, the adversary outputs a guess B prime for the bit B, and we say the adversary wins if this bit B prime is identical to the bit B. We say a scheme is int IBE secure if the probability that this guess B prime matches B is at most one half plus negligible. The notion of identity-based encryption was famously introduced by Shamir in a work in 1984, however, without providing a construction. 17 years later, Bonnet and Franklin found a construction based on bilinear groups, as well as Clifford Cox provided a construction based on the quadratic residuosity assumption. Furthermore, we we also know constructions from the LWE problem. And this is pretty much the situation, this is pretty much the situation today. We basically know IBE from these three standard assumptions, bilinear maps, LWE, and quadratic residuosity. And uh, in the case of quadratic residuosity, we even need a random oracle to realize this notion. This might be seen as a rather small pool of hardness assumption. In particular, when we compare this to the notion of public key encryption, where there is a much wider pool of assumption, assumptions from which we can instantiate this primitive. So there is somewhat of a perceived gap between the notion of IBE and public key encryption. Furthermore, we know that black box techniques will not suffice to build identity-based encryption from trapdoor permutations, CCA encryption, or the decisional Diffie-Hellman assumption. Furthermore, uh, um, reinforcing this perceived gap between identity-based encryption and public key encryption. What I'm gonna show you in this work will be the first fully secure identity-based encryption scheme from the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption without the use of bilinear pairings and our construction will be based on the computational Diffie-Hellman problem, which is to compute uh, g to the a, b, given g to the a and g to the b, uh, and not the decisional Diffie-Hellman problem, where the task is to distinguish this from uniform. 
The main ingredient to our approach is uh, evaluating a cryptographic primitive inside garbled circuits. This will allow us to overcome these aforementioned black box impossibility results. Now, we can also instantiate our result from the factoring assumption. And uh, in the paper, we also provide a construction of hierarchical IBE. Uh, this was an open problem uh, for even for factoring type assumptions, such as the quadratic residuosity problem. Now, in the rest of the talk, I am uh, first going to introduce a new notion of encryption we call chameleon hashing with encryption. And then I'll show you how to, how to construct identity-based encryption from this, from this primitive. So first, let's talk about chameleon hashing with encryption, or as we like to call it, chameleon encryption for short. A chameleon hashing scheme is a type of collision-resistant hash function with a special collision trapdoor. We formalize this via the following algorithms. There's a generator algorithm which outputs a hashing key and a collision trapdoor. There's a hashing algorithm which, which takes the hashing key, a message X, and some randomness R, and outputs a hash value. And uh, we require this function to be uh, shrinking the input X. We want it, want it to be compressing. And finally, uh, we, we require a, a collision finding algorithm we call H inverse, which uh, takes as input uh, the collision trapdoor, a pre-image X, and a new pre-image X prime, and the old randomness R, and outputs a new randomness R prime, such that uh, X R and X prime R prime collide under this hash function H. So this is chameleon hashing. Uh, our new notion is chameleon hashing with encryption, or chameleon encryption. So we add an encryption aspect to this primitive. Um, and uh, the first extra algorithm that we require is an encryption algorithm, which takes a hashing key, a hash value H, an index I and a bit, a bit B, and the message M, and outputs a ciphertext C, and a, a decryption algorithm, uh, uh, which takes as input a, the hashing key K, and the pre-image X together with the randomness and the um, ciphertext, and outputs a message M prime. And we require uh, that the message M prime is identical to M given that uh, the pre-image X fulfills the condition that X is a pre-image of this hash value H, and it fulfills the condition that the ith bit of X is B. So if Xi is equals B, equals B uh, Bob will be able to decrypt the message M, and if this is not, a, not the case, if Bob knows a, say, a different pre-image uh, for, for the hash value H, we require ciphertext indistinguishability. So even if uh, Bob knows a valid, valid pre-image to this hash value H, but its if bit is flipped, Bob will not tell whether we've encrypted a zero or a one. So, now I'm going to show you a uh, simple construction of chameleon encryption from the DDH assumption. In the paper, we can actually do this from the CDH assumption, but for the sake of brevity, I will provide the simplified DDH construction here. The hashing key consists of a group generator G together uh, with n pairs of group elements GI0 and GI1. Uh, the hashing algorithm uh, first computes g to the r and then the product of the gjxj. That's the output of my uh, chameleon hash function. I am not going to provide the uh, collision finding algorithm on this slide. Uh, for details, please refer to the paper. However, I'm straight going to the encryption algorithm. So as a first attempt, we might try to uh, just use the Algamal approach. We say the first component of the ciphertext is H to the S, and the second component is just GIB to the S times M. That's an Algamal encryption. 
However, this would not be enough for the decryptor to recover this message. Since the decryptor doesn't, doesn't know a discrete logarithm of this H with respect to G, I, B, but rather a pre-image under this hash function. So what we do instead is we add a few extra terms to the ciphertext, uh, in particular a G to the S and uh, some, some group elements C, J, 0 and C, J, 1, which are G, J, 0 to the S and G, J, 1 to the S. And uh, what's important here, we don't provide these elements for J equals I, because then one could directly decrypt and we wouldn't have any security. So how do we decrypt? Decryption basically computes this uh, product. It takes this term E, uh, computes Z0 to the R times the product J not equals I, CJ, XJ, and divides it by C1. So why is this scheme correct? How can we see that this scheme correct? Well, in the first step, uh, we know that this C1 uh, is just H to the S. So let's just plug, plug in H to the S. Now we know that H is a hash value of X using randomness R. So let's plug that inside and already pull, pull the uh, G I X I to the S term out. So this is just the, uh, the hash value with a G I X I term pulled out. We can uh, uh, cancel these terms and what remains is M times G I B to the S divided by G I X I to the S. And if um, our pre-image actually fulfills this condition that the ith bit is B, those two terms cancel out and we have M. For the security reduction, please refer to the paper. What I'm gonna show you now is a de deconstruction of identity-based encryption from chameleon encryption. And I'm not gonna provide you the full construction, but a toy example which showcases all techniques that are used for the full construction. So we are gonna build a IDE scheme that we're gonna call setup, keygen, encrypt, and decrypt. Um, and we'll only do so for four identities. In, in my scheme, there will only be four identities, but as I said, the techniques I'm showing you here will generalize to an exponential number of identities with, uh, from polynomial hardness assumptions. So doing this step from constant to exponential will not require a change in, in my hardness assumptions. The key generation algorithm that I'm gonna show you is stateful. That means uh, when I generate new keys, I need to remember the old keys. This can be de-randomized using pseudo-random functions, but again, for details, please refer to the paper. And as ingredients, uh, we have first a chameleon encryption scheme, gen, h, h inverse, enc, and dec. Second, I'll require a standard in CPA secure public key encryption scheme, uh, k, g, e, and d. And as a third component, I require garbled circuits. I will use garbled circuits. So first, let's look into how key generation works. So the, uh, the overall idea of this scheme is to arrange the keys in a binary tree. Um, let's look what the setup algorithm does. The setup algorithm first chooses two pairs of hashing keys and collision trapdoors of the chameleon encryption scheme, K1, T1, and K2, K2. We will associate K1 with the first layer of this tree and K2 with the second layer of this tree. Then we'll compute a hash value H as a hash value of the all zero string. And we'll write this hash value H into the root. And that's already it. H, K1, and K2 defines our master public key. The master secret key is given by the corresponding private values, namely the collision trapdoors T1 and T2, and the randomness R used to compute this hash value. Now let's see how key generation works. Say we wanna generate a key for the identity 1, 1. 
In general, we will associate identities with root to leaf, path, leaf paths. So the identity one one goes first first left first left. The identity one zero would go first left uh, or sorry first right then left. So identities will be or identity keys will be tied to root to leaf paths. At first, uh, we'll generate a hash value h0 for, uh, for this slot here, also as a hash value of zero, and uh, a hash value h1 also as a hash value of one. So what I would like now is that h is actually the hash value of a concatenation of h0 and h1, but right now h is uh, the hash value of an all zero string. So what I'm gonna do is I'm using this collision magic of chameleon hash functions. I'm using the collision trapdoor to program H to be the hash value of H0 concatenated H H1. Of course, in the process, I'll have to uh, use a new randomness R prime. But uh, under this randomness R prime, H is the hash value is identical to the hash value of H0 concatenated with H1 under K1. So let's go further. Um, next thing, I'm gonna generate two pairs of public and secret keys for, a, for my public key encryption scheme uh, uh, using the algorithm key J. Call the public keys EK10 and EK11. And I'm gonna write these uh, two encryption keys into these leaves. Uh, for now, I'm gonna remember the de decryption key DK11. And I'm proceeding as before. I want H1 to be the hash value of EK10 concatenated with EK11. And to do so, I'm gonna use the collision magic of my chameleon hash function. And after I found this, uh, new random, uh, random term, R1 prime, I actually have the guarantee that H1 is the hash value of EK0, EK10 concatenated with EK11. And that's already it. Uh, now I have a identity secret key. This identity secret key consists of H0, H, H1, and R prime, as well as EK10, EK11, and R1 prime. So it consists of basically all the data along the root to leaf path of, um, of this tree, plus additionally the decryption key DK11. That's, that's how key generation proceeds. Now let's look into encryption and decryption. And to, uh, to turn this into a working IBE scheme, I need an additional ingredient, namely Yao's garbled circuits. So a garbling scheme consists of an algorithm garble, which takes as input a circuit C and outputs a garbling C tilde of this circuit and a set of labels lab. We also ask for a um, input garbling function, which takes as input, a, uh, an input X and uh, the labels lab and computes a garbled input X tilde. In the case of Yao's garbled circuit, this garbled, sim garbled input function is really simple. Namely, uh, each input wire of this circuit is associated with two labels. And if you want to encode such an X, we, we will just choose the uh, late, for, for the first, say for the first wire, we will choose the label corresponding to the first bit of X. For the second wire, we'll choose the label corresponding to the second bit of X, and so forth. Now, we need a method to evaluate these garbled circuits. Uh, this is usually called an eval function, which takes as input a garbled circuit C tilde and garbled inputs, and we require this correctness property that the output of this eval function is identical to what uh, the circuit uh, evaluated on these plain inputs would have produced. In terms of security, we, we require that C tilde, X tilde, and Y tilde in this case 
tell the evaluator nothing more than the result uh, or the output of this circuit C of X and Y. So to simplify uh, the notation on the following slides a little bit, let me introduce two additional functions. We don't introduce them in the paper. I'll just uh, introduce them here for, for a cleaner write-up on my slides. Say Alice knows a hash value H and a set of labels, LB, IB. We want to encrypt each label under, a, under the, the key K, the hash value H, and the bit IB. So we want to encrypt LB, IB using index I and bit B in the chameleon encryption. And as a shorthand, I introduced the notion batch encrypt of K, H, and lab for this. So this ciphertext is passed on to the decryptor, who can now use his pre-image and the randomness R to decrypt the uh, encrypted label LIXI, uh, namely the labels corresponding to the string X, and this is via definition of the garbled input function in Yao scheme, uh, precisely uh, the garbling of input X under the labels lab. And for, for this function, I'm going to introduce this shorthand batch decryption of K, X, R, and L. OK. Um, and now we can dive into uh, the encryption algorithm. First, let's, uh, again, draw our binary tree uh, with the master public key here. In, to, to encrypt uh, a message M under the master public key and the identity 1-1, one, one, we, will, we will first take a circuit T, hardwire a message M into this circuit, and this circuit receives as inputs an encryption key EK10 and an e encryption key, key EK11 and outputs uh, an encryption of M under this key EK11. And what we're going to do with this circuit TM is we are going to garble it. And the output of this garbling will be a garbled circuit T tilde and labels lab one. So we haven't used the, ma the master public key at this point. In the next step, we'll take a second circuit P, which has as hardwired input labels lab one, and takes as input two hash values H0 and H1, and uh, computes as output, output encrypted labels L1, which is the batch encryption of the labels lab one under K2 and uh, the hash value H1. So we take this circuit, we hardwire lab one into it, and now we garble it and the output uh, we call PTLE and lab. And finally, we just take these labels lab and encrypt them under the hash value age, which is provided to us in the master public key. So this, uh, this hash value age comes from the master public key, and we can use it to, to batch encrypt these labels and call that L. So, and that's our ciphertext. The ciphertext consists of L, P, D, T, L, D, and T, T, L, D. Now let's get into decryption. And uh, first thing we need for decryption is the user or identity secret key. So let's write it back into, into our tree, H0, H1, and R prime, as well as EK10, EK11, and R1 prime, and the decryption key, DK11. We also need the ciphertext, so let's uh, write down that as well. L, P tilde, and T tilde. And to make, to declutter things a little, let me remove the tree and rearrange these terms a little. So now we have uh, the, the terms that come from the user secret key on the left side and the ciphertext terms on the right side. Now let's see how decryption works and why it works. So if L, P tilde, T tilde is a correctly formed ciphertext, 
then we know that L is a batch encryption of lab under the hashing key K1 and the hash value H. So as a first step, let's just batch decrypt L uh, using, uh, um, using H0, H1, and R prime uh, as a uh, decryption key here. And by the correctness of our chameleon encryption scheme, this is actually identical to the uh, garbling of input, input H0 concatenated H1 under the labels lab. Let's continue. Now we have garbled, garbled inputs and we have a, a garbled circuit. So the obvious thing to do is to evaluate P tilde on X tilde. And the result is some output L1. But uh, since we've evaluated this by the correctness of the garbling scheme, we've just evaluated this circuit P here. So the output L1 is actually identical to the batch encryption of lab one under K2 and H1. Let's proceed. Now we have a batch encryption. Uh, the obvious thing to do is to decrypt it using uh, um, this hash pre-image of, of H1. And uh, let's call the result X1. But by the uh, correctness of the chameleon encryption scheme, this again corresponds to the garbling of the input EK10 concatenated with EK11. And as a final step, let's evaluate the garbled circuit T tilde on X1 tilde. But by the correctness of this garbled circuit, this CT, which is output by a T tilde, is identical to the encryption of M under EK11. And in a final step, we can just use the DK11 to de decrypt the ciphertext CT and obtain the message M. So let me wrap up. I've showed you the first identity-based encryption scheme under, from the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption without pairings. Uh, the, the magic ingredient that we used to circumvent black box impossibility were garbled circuits. In particular, we evaluated uh, crypto encryption functions inside garbled circuits. And as a final open problem, let me just ask, uh, can we realize other advanced public key encryption schemes under the Diffie-Hellman assumption, maybe using similar techniques? Thank you for your attention.